Welcome to Major Keys. I'm Shashana Keys here with my guest today, Ari Chambers. She's the founder of Highlighter and she's a mixed media journalist for Turner Sports. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm happy to join my sister in today. Thank you, darling. All right. So first question, what is your sports journey? So where did you find sports or sports found you? Where does your sports story begin? I have a really unconventional way that I did sports all throughout life. Um, I started with Taekwondo when I was four years old. And at the same time, I started cheering because in Taekwondo, like martial arts, you learn to tumble and I just fell in love with cheerleading. But all the while, I grew up in Raleigh, North Carolina. So I got to witness Kay Yao and Sylvia Hatchell coach. You know, these are powerful women as head coaches of um, collegiate basketball. And so shout out to Bill Pat, um, shout out to NC State. And just being able to be surrounded by basketball, I've always loved it, but again, my sports journey started with martial arts and cheerleading. So I stayed with it. And then in high school, I decided to play volleyball. Um, and I was really naturally great at volleyball. So volleyball became my main sport, but I ultimately cheered in college. But that was my sports journey. I was always surrounded by ball, though. And I always knew that that was something that I was forever indebted to because it gave me like a depiction of powerful women so early on. And so I was always owed like the game I needed to pay back. Yes, and we're going to dive some more into that. But my next question is, what did sports teach you? So you did cheerleading and taekwondo. What did you take away from sport after all was said and done when you were a kid? Discipline and teamwork, especially with cheerleading. If you think about a stunt, you have three people holding up one person. So if one person doesn't do their job, the whole stunt falls. And that's like the biggest takeaway, the biggest key from cheerleading that I've learned. Like, it takes everybody to work together in order to achieve the goal. Absolutely. And you know, you're the founder of Bleacher Reports Highlighter and it's a platform that focuses on women in sports and culture. How did that come about and you know, what inspired you to found it? So I always saw my friends who were in the league not getting adequate coverage. And so I started doing it myself. I started recording interviews. Back then, this was before Zoom, before, you know, people did the interviews on the cell phone. So I would be with my cell phone with them in their away team hotel room and just recording our interviews and posting them on Twitter and it gained traction. Bleacher Report found me online. They were like, do you want to start up our women's platform? And I was like, absolutely. So I branded it fully as Highlight Her. And then now we're a small team of Black women. And I think that's so special. Oh, absolutely. So why exclusively women's sports? I know you said you had friends who were, that you felt like needed more coverage. Why exclusively women's sports for this platform? Because exclusively women's sports is what impacted me. Um, so I know what it's like to, to want to see that representation, want to see yourself in the elite level. And so I want little girls and, and you know, people like anywhere in between to feel represented in spaces they haven't always. And so I feel like the men's side, they have enough, right? They have so many people that want to cover them. A lot of people look to women's sports as a stepping stone. It's not my stepping stone. It's exactly where I want to be. I tell that to everybody, anybody who asks. Um, because it's my job to continue to amplify the representation of women in sport. And even now I'm, I'm branching off as I'm becoming educated, as I'm, I'm learning, you know, as we see players like Lasia Clarendon within the league, the non-binary space to making sure they're represented too. Um, so just those who have been underserved for so long, but still excel so much and deserve the coverage, I wanna give that to them. And you know, you're a big part of increasing that 4%, right? Of women's coverage. What have you seen specifically in the social media space? How have you seen the branding of women change, you know, with the increase of exposure on social media? Yeah, I think the players are becoming more empowered to own their own brand on social media. So that's something special. We get to know the players way better because they know how to utilize social media. I see more arguments about who should be the GOAT, who should be this, that, and third, but that means people are talking about it. So even if it's a provocative talk, I encourage it because you know not everything is rainbows and ponies. You should be able to have a debate, have a discussion, argue over things within the sport because that's what sports is, like best division. Like, People are going to root for somebody. People are going to root for somebody else. And just having that prominence, especially on Twitter, WNBA Twitter is undefeated. And so especially on Twitter, you see this discussion happening much more because it's it's people are tweeting about it. And then that's being um, amplified and shown to other people that might not have been paying attention before. And people are joining in. There's like, oh, this is a community I can be a part of. So social media allows 
people to see themselves within that community and be able to participate actively in discussion and learning um, in order to really pour, like it pours into them so that they can really fall in love with the game. Oh yeah, and WNBA Twitter definitely gets a little spicy. Uh, but like yes, you it said, does. it's she's the spicy so one. She's the spicy one. <laughs> but it's good for the game. I mean, it happens it's in men's sports as well. So not to say that we need to do everything that the men's side does, but I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's valuable to have discourse mm-hmm. and discussion, right? So uh, I'm always glad to see it. You always say the WNBA is important. You know, that's the kind of energy that you bring. And that is your motto. Why would you say in your own words, the WNBA is important? Uh, The WNBA is so important because people want to see themselves in spaces that they've only dreamed of. So, you you know, a personal anecdote. When I saw Camilla Pepper Pursley um, posted up at a game with a poster, and I think she had Natasha Cloud's jersey on. I know we were at Connecticut, but she had Natasha Cloud's jersey on. And she was able to meet Natasha. And another girl was beside her who wanted to meet Chrissy Teller at the time when she was playing for the Mystics. And just having them be able to meet their idols and so they can see themselves in that. Even, even Pepper meeting me and Megan McPee, it, it, it allowed her to see herself in the sports journalism world. And so the WNBA is exactly that. It, it, it gives you your goals personified and it shows that you don't have to be the stereotypical cookie cutter woman. There's so many different types of people within the league that like there's a Courtney Williams, but you already uh, you also have like a Diamond to Shields, and you have a uh, who's type of, like Taya Cooper. You have these different types of people that you see yourself in. You have the Brittany Griners, you have the Sue Bird, you have all these different types of people, and then, you know Asia for the culture. There's so many great. It's such a great blend, a great mo- melting pot of representation and. And especially for little black girls out there, it's a league of 80% black people. It's a heavily um, LGBTQIA plus league too, like that they wouldn't otherwise be represented. So it's just so many different factors of representation in there. So when I say the WNBA is important, it's because of representation and the outpour that the players give to the communities too. Yeah, I think that that's the biggest thing that I take away from the social media movement and the ability of the players to brand themselves is that, you know, before there was mm-hmm. like one box that you had to fit into if you wanted to be, you know, the face of the league or someone popular in the league. Mm-hmm. And now, like you said, all those different names that you gave, they bring something different. Uh, and and it's mm-hmm. a, a point where a young girl could latch on to like, okay, I'm, I'm similar to that, right? She represents me. I feel like I gravitate toward that. Um, and so that's what I appreciate, I think, the most about social media. Yeah. Like, like I see myself in Lexi Brown. I think me and Lexi are very yeah. similar, but then I went to a high school talking um, when we did the mural of Natasha Cloud and the kids were like, we look up to Courtney Williams. And I'm like, that is beautiful. Like you have right. so many different facets of people within the league. Right. Absolutely. Athletes are not a monolith by any means. Mm-hmm. All right. So we're going to move on to uh, a segment called It's a Vibe. So what is okay. something, I mean, literally anything that you would say right now, it's a vibe for you. You know, you're listening to something, you're watching something, uh, you're wearing something, whatever it is. Uh, what is something that you would say, it's a vibe? Mm. Soy lattes. That's what? a vibe for me. Soy lattes. That's a vibe. Um, me and baggy clothes, like I love just dressing in sweats and like with a cute like little midriff. That's a vibe. Um, my dog, Tiger, he might not be a vibe. He's actually a mood, but... Let's just keep them as a vibe too. Okay, okay. And now we're gonna do a lightning round. All right. Oh. So some of these questions are related to sports, some are not. All right, but you gotta answer them quick. All right, you ready? Mm-hmm. What is your favorite women's sports moment of all time? Arike Gumbawale 2018 NCAA final. Okay, that's not the first time that's been said on this show. So okay, okay. <laughs> this is I'll you on the court. So exciting. Anyway, keep going. Dream, uh, your dream sporting event to attend. So as a fan. The Olympics gymnastics. Yeah, big time. Did you see Simone last night on the VMAs? I did not because I, I don't even know what the heck I was doing yesterday, but Simone, <laughs> I saw the pictures and I said, you better go off. Sarah. Yes, you yeah, go she off. looks so good. What is your dream, or excuse me, who is your dream athlete to interview? I actually just interviewed my dream athlete, um, Dominique Dawes. I okay. said that at the beginning of this year, and let me tell you about manifestation. That manifest. 
Uh, I surely <laughs> did. Um, but no, I, I, it's a dream every time I get to talk to players. And so I think that I have checked off pretty much every player I want to talk to. And I, we just keep building. Keep That's building. beautiful. Who's the most impactful athlete, um, I guess, on your, your own personal, I guess, life, your journey, your career? Candace Parker, um, great human, lover to death. She transcends generations. This is supposed to be rapid fire. Candace Parker, there you go. <laughs> That's a good answer, though. Who is your WNBA GOAT? I feel like we're getting spicy here, but it's a big topic right now. Yeah, it is. Um, I'm going to go, if you would ask me this, like, any other time, if I didn't just give you Candace Parker, my GOAT, my personal GOAT is Candace Parker. Um, but as far as notoriety and, 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 and what they've accomplished, I would say Cynthia Cooper. That's big. Celebrity you would like to bring as a guest to a WNBA game? Rihanna. Oh, okay. You were quick on that one. All right. All right. So last question. I asked all my guests, you know, the show is called Major Keys. What is major, one major key that you would give to those watching, you know, about persevering about, you know, trying to achieve and, you know, get to the level that you're at. One major. Yeah. Thing. Don't wait for your yes. That's what I tell everybody. Don't wait for your yes. So whatever, whatever you want to pursue, whether that's basketball, whether that's sports broadcasting, whether that's, you know, banking, I don't know. Don't wait for that major moment to actively pursue it yourself. So, yeah. That's big. No, that's great. I, I needed to hear that. So that that's great. Thank you great. so much for Girl, joining me. You're doing it. Look at you. Look at you now. You didn't wait for a yes, it is. This is your own thing. And I love that for you. Well, thank you. I appreciate all that you're doing for not only just, you know, the WNBA, but, you know, girls across the country with representation and, you know, little black girls like well, I'm not little, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> Young black girls. You inspire me like too. I see you on the sideline now. I see you. I see you. Look at girl. It's inspiring. We inspire each other. Well, I appreciate that. And, you know, continued success with Highlighter and highlighting, you know, women in sports. I mean, in my opinion, there's no better cause. Uh, so I'm excited to see what you do in the future. Thank you. And you keep going with the sideline where I see you. <laughs> sideline reporting for the win. We love that. I got the keys, keys, keys.